Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Sorry, can I have your attention? Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Pauline Joyce. I am the Director of Quality and Clinical Engagement for the Physician Associate Studies Programme. I'm delighted to welcome you all here today to the RCSI White Coat Ceremony. Before the formal proceedings begin, I have a few announcements. If in the event of an alarm going and we have to evacuate the building, there are three exits at the back of the room and one at the front of the room on your left. Please take a moment to locate your nearest exit. The proceedings are being live streamed, so remember you are on camera. Please turn your mobile to silent. In a short while, faculty staff will process into the hall and I will ask you to be upstanding. The ceremony begins with a number of speeches by faculty staff and your student union president and education officer. After the speeches, you will be invited by the Deputy Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Professor Hannah McGee, to put on your white coats and recite the RCSI declaration with our president, Professor Ronan O'Connell. Please read it loudly and proudly with the president. It's a powerful declaration and we want you all to raise the roof and make those watching even more proud of you as you take your next step to becoming a healthcare professional. Finally, once the ceremony is over, please leave the auditorium as quickly as possible to the nearest exit. I wish you all a very enjoyable evening. Now, please be upstanding. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the RCSI White Coat Ceremony. I'd like to particularly extend a warm welcome to all your family and friends watching this ceremony by live stream. My name is Professor Cahill Kelly. I'm CEO, Vice Chancellor of RCSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences, and a proud RCSI alumnus. The annual White Coat Ceremony is one of the highlights of our undergraduate and postgraduate schools calendar welcoming the arrival of a new students beginning their healthcare professional career. Due to the pandemic, we've had to reschedule the White Coat Ceremony on more than one occasion. And it's a real pleasure for all of us as RCSI faculty and staff to have a genuine White Coat Ceremony with you all present today. Since the college was founded in 1784, RCSI graduates have continuously pursued excellence and have pushed the barriers of healthcare innovation, with many going on to become worldwide healthcare leaders. You too now join the RCSI family and begin your journey as healthcare professionals. Like so many innovations at RCSI, the White Coat Ceremony originated during the 1990s as a result of a student union request for an occasion to acknowledge the introduction of students into the anatomy laboratory. It has since progressed to a formal, significant event for all new students of medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy, and physician associate studies. You're here today. We are here to join you and to witness you recite the RCSI declaration with our president, Professor Ronan O'Connell. 
We know that you, as our newest healthcare students, are committed to becoming healthcare professionals of the highest standard and leaders of the future. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our platform party for this evening. In the centre of position behind the mace is the president of RCSI, Professor Ronan O'Connell. From your right, seeking on the platform are Professor Lisa Alexander, Director of Physician Associates Programme at RCSI. Professor Clive Lee, Professor of Anatomy. Professor Suzanne McDonough, Head of the School of Physiotherapy at RCSI. Professor Arnold Hill, Head of the School of Medicine. Professor Tracy Robson, Head of the School of Pharmacy and Biomolecular Sciences. Professor Shimas Sweenan, Director of Graduate Entry Medicine at RCSI. Professor Hannah McGee, Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Dr. Olga Piskareva, Director of Foundation Year. Professor Dennis Harkin, Professor of Medical Professionalism at RCSI. Dr. Pauline Joyce, Director of Quality and Clinical Engagement in the Physician Associate Studies Programme. Jyoti Dawan, President of the RCSI Student Union. Emmanuel Aquari, Student Union Education Officer. And Mr. Frank Donegan, Mace Bearer. It now gives me enormous pleasure to call on our Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Professor Hannah McGee, to provide an address on professionalism at RCSI. Good evening, everyone. And I am delighted to welcome you as students in person and families online to your first event here with senior faculty in RCSI. These are the faculty who are and who will instruct guide and support you through your studies in RCSI. And their participation today here in the platform party signifies the importance of this ceremony, the first formal introduction to professionalism in your studies. You will be expected from the outset here to understand the responsibilities you undertake and the privileges that you will receive as student healthcare professionals. The White Coat Ceremony is a recognition that you our students are embarking on an important professional healthcare career with responsibilities for patients. And this ceremony is your first formal introduction to professionalism. The ceremony espouses the four core values of RCSI, R for respect, C for collaboration, S for scholarship, and I for innovation. Qualifying as a health professional involves undertaking academic study combined with training as an apprentice in the healthcare settings. And this essential apprenticeship training is possible because in this society, patients and their families generously allow their care to be delivered in teaching environments. And they will permit you as students to learn about healthcare delivery while they as patients are being treated for often serious, worrying and distressing conditions. And without this generosity of spirit by patients and their families, your education as health professional trainees would not really be meaningfully possible. So amongst the generosity of spirit from the general public, we count the generosity of those who donate their own bodies and the families of those donors. Their amazing generosity enables your training in the anatomy room. And you will hear next from our Professor of Anatomy, Professor Clive Lee. One way to signal this important rite of passage for you, beginning your career as a healthcare professional at RCSI, is to use the metaphor of the white coat. The white coat symbolizes many things, two of which are particularly salient for you here today. Firstly, the role of the health professional, the physician, the pharmacist, the physiotherapist, the physician associate who cares for their patient. And secondly, the role of the scientist, the professional who is up to date and who understands the key scientific evidence and who as an informed and skilled interpreter of that evidence for the patient in front of them that they are treating. Of course, we know white coats are no longer worn in many professional settings. Nonetheless, it's an important and powerful symbol of the roles that you are preparing to undertake as evidence-based health professionals. As the health professionals of the future, and the trainee health professionals of today, you will each encounter challenges that will be particular to yourselves as you learn about the variety of human conditions, the diseases, disability, 
mental health challenges, interpersonal and family challenges such as poverty, interpersonal violence, interpersonal violence, sorry, fertility, infertility, addiction, etc. As well as many joyous episodes of human experiences that are the rare privileges of health professionals to witness and to share with patients and their families. And while the things that will be a particular challenge to you, perhaps because of a family death or illness, or a resemblance of a patient to someone that you know, or your own health worries at the time, all of these will differ for each of you. And you will all share, however, that commonality of upsetting experiences and the need for some extra support or kindness at tough times. So remember, your good day may be somebody else's tough day uh, and approach each other with caution and care as you, as you um, go ahead with your studies and ask for and give compassion and support to each other in this important journey. Your careers are not ones to be faced as perfectionists alone. Teamwork skills are essential to your success and you will all work together in the future as part of an interprofessional team with the common goal of leading the world to better health. A key part of your graduation ceremony um, will be the RCSI Graduates Declaration. This declaration is based on the ancient Greek Hippocratic Oath that was used in the qualification of doctors. And it's a modern day statement shaped by previous RCSI students like yourselves, which states their commitment to the ideals of professionalism in their career on the day they graduate. It's a declaration by all RCSI graduates, all those undertaking undergraduate professional careers in medicine, pharmacy, physiotherapy and physician associates. And a similar declaration is also recited by all of our postgraduate research degree awardees here at RCSI. So as you make your declaration of professionalism with the RCSI president, Professor Rowan McConnell today, remember you are starting a great personal and professional journey. We want to inspire and guide you to undertake it in a truly professional way. And we look forward to working with you to help you to achieve your career goals in the coming year. years. I now invite Professor Clive Lee, Professor of Anatomy, to address you on the Anatomy Room experience. I'd like to join with my colleagues in welcoming you to the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland and to the beginning, well, at least halfway through year one, of your professional training. This white coat ceremony is a rite of passage, a visible sign of your entry into a professional course. All four professions involve dealing with patients and you'll meet your first patients in the anatomy room. But where do they come from? If you look at anatomy lesson paintings, such as those by Rembrandt, the cadaver was always a convicted criminal who'd been executed that day. But the demand for cadavers exceeded the supply, so grave robbing and murder were resorted to. This all changed in 1832 with the passing of the Anatomy Act, specifically to ensure a legal supply of cadavers with which to educate doctors. Initially, the source was those whose bodies were unclaimed by their relatives. But in the 1960s, this changed when the Irish anatomists initiated a campaign to encourage members of the Republic to donate their remains after death for medical teaching and research. So it is these people whom you will meet in the anatomy room, Irish men and women who have generously donated their remains so that you may learn anatomy. The people who donate their bodies to us want you to learn from them. It is their gift to you. They are both your teachers and your first patients. You can repay their generosity by doing your best, by studying hard and by treating their remains with discretion and respect. Your clinical problems should not be discussed in public on the bus home, and nor should theirs. For the same reasons, you must not take photographs in the anatomy room. So our donors will also help teach you how to behave as a professional. All of you will have already commenced your anatomy studies. And when you don your white coat and come into the anatomy room, you'll meet some of the senior members of the health professions, people like as one of our surgeon preceptors, Mr. Brian Lane, who's both a graduate and a fellow of the college. These are people to look up to, emulate their knowledge, professionalism and kindness. 
They teach by example, and you'll learn, I suspect, sometimes by osmosis and perhaps also a little bit of magic. I hope that you enjoy your anatomy course with us, resplendent in your white coats. They are health and safety devices to protect you in the anatomy room, so please keep them clean and out of the canteen. They are also an important professional symbol, so you've got high standards to maintain. I congratulate you on reaching this landmark in your careers and your parents, families for helping you to do so. I look forward to working with you and wish you success and good luck. I would now like to introduce you to my colleague, Dr. Olga Piskareva, who is the director of Foundation Year. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm delighted to speak to you about the RCSI STEP program on behalf of our Deputy Dean for Student Engagement, Professor Celine Marmen. During your time in RCSI, you will be afforded many opportunities to grow and further develop on a, profession, on a personal level. As a part of this journey, I would like to introduce you to our RCSI Student Engagement and Partnership Program, or simply STEP. Here in RCSI, we believe in the power of student partnership. In fact, we commit to nurturing, promoting, and implementing a culture of partnership and inclusivity, where the expertise and perspectives of both our students and our staff are equally valued. And by working together, we will drive positive change across the RCSI community for the benefit of human health. Each year, we have formal RCSI student step agreement. There are agreements between RCSI and the undergraduate and postgraduate student unions. Our annual step agreements define how students and staff work together, sharing our education and research programs, ultimately enhancing the student experience. Because if you can enhance our student experience through student staff partnership, then we can enhance the knowledge and skills of our graduates. And given them, and given that our graduates are our future healthcare professionals, we ultimately enhance human health. Our CSI STEP program offers you the opportunity to undertake funded projects to work in partnership with staff to improve our university, our education, and research programs, and to engage with their local communities. Please go to our open access step model site, read the 2021-2022 step agreement and seek out ways to partner with staff in key, on key projects. We want to hear about your perspectives as students, but also avail of your experience and uh, ex expertise as learners. You as students will benefit by working with and learning from staff. Our staff will benefit by working with you and learning from you, our students, and ultimately our entire RCSI community will benefit as a result. I wish you every happiness and success as you continue on your exciting journey here in RCSI. I would now like to invite the Students' Union President, Jyoti Dawan, and also the Students' Union Education Officer, Emmanuel Aguirre, to deliver presentations to you, describing their experiences here in RCSI. We hope their stories and words will inspire you to think about ways in which you may further progress your own personal as well as professional development. I'm now delighted to hand you over to our uh, Student Union President, Jyoti Dewan, and SU Education Officer, Emmanuel Inquire. Good afternoon, President, members of the platform party, faculty, guests, and most importantly, fellow students. My name is Jody. I am a final year medical student and the current Student Union President. And I'd like to start by thanking you 
for all allowing me the honor to be part of such a momentous milestone. At the end of this ceremony today, you will put on your first white coat as an act of symbolism for the healthcare journey ahead of you. Five years ago, I sat in these very seats, somewhere over there actually, donning my white coat for the first time, feeling like a child trying on my parents' clothes in the mirror. It certainly didn't, I certainly didn't feel like a doctor and I felt out of my depth. I sat there in disbelief at the fact in only a few years, I would somehow have the knowledge, the skills, and the responsibility to be a healthcare professional. Standing here today, I've realized that it was not in fact a magical somehow. From feeling faint in the anatomy room in first year to participating in patient care in final year on the wards, it is a process as old as time, supported by the outstanding and experienced professors here that truly want the best for you. It is years of learning, forgetting, and wondering why you didn't pay attention in that lecture the first time, and then learning again. I have a few new gray hairs to show for it. But through all those late night study sessions and early morning ward rounds, after hitting snooze seven times, the very people in this room are the ones who will be doing it with you. Right now, you might be sitting with some of the friends you've made over the last few months, but take a good look around you. Take a good look at the people in front of you, at the people across the room. In time, you will come to recognize every face in this room and reflect on how, in some way or the other, that person has left an impact on you. Who knows, one of these faces might even be your future library crush. If you know, you know. These friendships, sometimes formed in the most unexpected ways, will be the ones to last a lifetime. All of us students in this room have come from every corner of the world to study here at our CSI. Take advantage of this concentrated diversity that makes RCSI so unique. This has undeniably been my most cherished aspect of studying at this institution. From planning events and performing dances with the Caribbean African Society to visiting an RCSI friend in Malaysia, I have not only experienced but become part of cultures I knew nothing about five years ago. By making these bonds, no matter where you travel in the world in five, 10, or 20 years to come, somewhere you will have a trusted friend, respected colleague, and most importantly, a couch to sleep on. These years will also offer you the opportunity to reinvent yourself and push yourself in ways you never anticipated. Coming into RCSI, I never thought in a million years I would be here on the Students' Union giving you a speech. All those years ago, I was a wide-eyed student, afraid of public speaking, and terrified of failure. As the world-renowned poet Eminem would say, my palms were sweaty, knees weak, arms heavy. But with encouragement from my peers ahead of me, and an attitude to take on every challenge as it comes. I tried something new. Eventually, I found myself debating confidently and campaigning in many SU elections, lost and won over the years. And so my time at RCSI has not only been a time of academia and rigorous study, but also an enriching pursuit of personal development and the most formative years of my life to date. As Albert Einstein once said, a ship is always safe at the shore, but that is not what it is built for. Over the next few years, sail from this shore. Do something that scares you, whether that be in sports, the arts, academics, or even a new hobby. 
give it a shot. You will surprise yourself with what you can achieve. Even if you fail, you'll do better the next time and learn many lessons along the way. Both your successes and your failures will equally define you and contribute to the confidence you will develop over the years as a healthcare student. Trust me, there will be times where you have no idea what to do in the room with a patient, despite having frantically Googled things in the corner before going in. There will be times where, despite feeling so confident, you start crumbling under the endless barrage of questions from the consultant, feeling yourself turning redder and redder in the face. In these moments, you might desperately wish you could vanish into a hole in the ground. But it is also these moments that help you learn. And by final year, you'll be reflecting on these times with a smile. No matter how it looks in the mirror, that white coat will feel like it fits more and more as the years go by. And always remember, as a testimony to your abilities, you have made it here to RCSI. With the support network of students ahead of you and the staff looking out for you, you will make it as a physician, a pharmacist, a physiotherapist, or a physician associate. The most important part of achieving that goal is the journey in getting there. Cherish these years. The best moments come and go quickly and core memories are formed without even realizing it. So when you put on your white coat today, pause and savor that moment because it's going to mean a lot to you today and even more in years to come. It is a symbol for the great trust patients place in you the privilege of the responsibility you carry, and is a reflection of the many healthcare professionals before you who have shaped healthcare into what it is today. Congratulations on making it this far. By coming to RCSI, Einstein's ship has left the shore and is about to embark on a journey that will shape who you are. It is up to you how you want to steer it. I wish you all the most success on this path to becoming future healthcare professionals, and I look forward to being your colleague and your friend in the future years to come. Thank you. Students. President, Deputy Vice Chancellor, esteemed members of the academic staff, and freshers old and new. I stand before you this afternoon with a message of hope, a message of motivation, and hopefully a message of perseverance. When the Vice Chancellor first asked me, or Deputy Vice Chancellor first asked me to make a speech today, from the perspective of an SU education officer, I was a bit lost for words and slightly perplexed. I mean, a person can only speak for so long about the importance of study and the best way to utilize your Anki flashcards before you eventually bore people to sleep. But then she instructed me more specifically to give a speech from the perspective of a final year student on the brink of graduation. A speech about personal growth and the challenges and positive experiences that I've had during my time here at RCSI that have contributed to a mindset of success. I remember not too long ago, I was sitting where you are now, a young and sprightly freshman, full of energy, nervous about my first card signing, but enthusiastic to take on the challenges of being a medical student and excited to be taking my first steps into the world of healthcare. But as excited as I was, I was apprehensive and I doubted myself. And I was unsure about what the future had in store for me at this university. And the more introductions and speeches I heard, the more I just wanted someone to sit me down and give me some simple advice about the road that lay ahead of me in this course. Whether you're in pharmacy, physiotherapy, physician's associate or medicine, each and every one of you has a race to run over these next few years, and it's not an easy one. So here's a quick 10 point list of some words of advice from an old man like me but I wish someone told me before I stepped foot on the racetrack and started my sprint. Number one, never be afraid to ask for help. 
Starting university life can be a daunting experience, especially in a new country and especially in a healthcare sciences university like RCSI. Most of you have recently left a familiar and comfortable environment of a previous school, a previous job, an undergrad course at your old university, and now you're here and you're expected to know so much so fast. Exam timetables, anatomy, pharmacology, where to look for research, where to look for accommodation, where to renew your GNIB card. It can all be so overwhelming. But the incredible thing about life here at RCSI is that there is always someone waiting for you around the corner, ready and willing to offer a helping hand. Right here on campus, you have the Sarah office upstairs, the Compass office, student services, the SU, your class coordinators, all within arm's reach. So ask questions and don't stop asking them. To quote one of the wisest and most awarded professors I know, Professor Dumbledore, help will always be given at Hogwarts to those who ask for it, or in this case, RCSI. Number two, you're never too young to safeguard and prioritize your future. You may be in the first year of your journey here at RCSI, but don't let anyone tell you that you're too young or too inexperienced to start working towards your dream career. I look out upon you all and I don't just see students. I see future cardiologists, general surgeons, incredible GPs, radiologists, pediatricians, and leading community and hospital pharmacists in your fields. I see orthopedic surgeons. I see innovative physiotherapists. I see ENTs and amazing physicians associates. I want each and every one of you to look around you. Seriously, look around you right now. The next Abraham Collies could be in this room. The next founding father or founding mother of robotic surgery could be here in this room. So start to think about your dream, what your dream could be, and start working towards it. Work extra hard to excel in that module. Get involved in research, present at that conference, apply for that extra summer elective, even if you don't want to. Your future is in your hands now. Number three. Study, a word you're all going to become very accustomed to over these next four to five years. When it comes to studying and preparing for exams, find out what works best for you and roll with it. One of the biggest misconceptions about university life is that there's only one way to study, and that's sat in the library with your head buried in a book. But the truth couldn't, this couldn't be further from the truth. We're all such diverse and incredibly different people in terms of our hobbies, our habits, our personalities. The exact same applies to the way we study. And what works for you or your classmates might not necessarily work for someone else. Whether it be flashcards or watching clinical skills videos, discussing with your study group, writing things from memory on a whiteboard or a mixture of all the both, find out what works for you and fi find a time to determine what brings you success. Number four, it's okay to fail. Now, I think some of you must have thought that was a typo or I misread that line, so I'm just going to say it one more time. It's okay to fail. Because failing doesn't make you a failure. It makes you human. In actual fact, failure is one of the most important parts of growing up. But it's how we respond to that failure that defines us and makes us the people we are today. Number five, a good night's sleep is your best friend the night before an exam. Whereas an all-nighter of study fueled by coffee and Red Bull, not, not so much. Number six, we all have our comfort zones. Step out of them. Often in life, it's the opportunities which scare us the most that reap the biggest rewards. Each and every one of us here is blessed. Blessed to be part of an institution with incredible student societies, sports clubs, research programs, and support networks for those who wish to work on projects both domestically and pursue missions abroad. Never in my life did I think that during my years at RCSI, I'd have the opportunity to join a sports club or play in a band, or teach tutorials to other students, or even partake in research overseas. Believe it or not, I even found myself roped into a full feature like musical at this university, only to find out that the skills that I gained during that experience made me a more confident and vocal clinician with patients, and that the friends that I made during that experience were friends for life. Number seven, we all have social bubbles. Step out of them. In actual fact, don't just step out of them, broaden them and burst those bubbles if you have to. RCSI is so unique in that you can find students here from every corner and every reach of the globe. Before coming to RCSI, never in my life did I think that by the time I left this college, I could confidently tell you that some of my best friends are from Trinidad, from India, from Saudi, from Canada, from Oman, from Philadelphia, from Pakistan, 
Ethiopia, Australia, Singapore, and everywhere in between. When embarking on a new life in a new city or a new country, the temptation is to stick with your tribe or only associate with people similar to yourself. Because as human beings, that's what we find comfort in, similarity. But as soon as you step out of that social bubble, you'll find that those who you meet can greatly enrich your life. Because with diversity of friends and companions comes an even greater diversity of opinions, perspectives, and a greater understanding of the world at large. Number eight, this university has incredible counseling services. Use them. Sometimes we can become so consumed by the stress of our exams or so overwhelmed by chasing our goals that we sacrifice our own mental health and well-being for the sake of academic success. But one thing that my time at RCSI has taught me is that your own personal peace of mind is priceless. So if you're going through a hard time or feeling the anxiety from the weight of exams and studies bearing down on you, or you simply just want an attentive ear to listen to you. This college provides free therapy and counseling services to any student who needs them. At the end of the day, we're all working towards becoming reliable and empathetic healthcare providers, but you cannot take care of others without taking care of yourself first. As our SU welfare officer so often says, to be a professional in healthcare, you have to be a professional in self-care. Number nine, college isn't a competition. This isn't a competition, so help each other. Like I said, we're all running our own individual race, but that doesn't mean that we get through that race any faster by tripping up others as they sprint past us. And likewise, offering a helping hand to a sprinter who's tripped and fallen in front of you can make your own race that little bit easier in the long run. And finally, number 10, cherish every single moment. You're all about to embark on one of the most challenging yet incredible journeys of your life. And as cliche as it sounds, the first leg of that journey starts today. In fact, it was the great civil rights activist, Nelson Mandela, who said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And when you look at the world around us today, riddled with climate change, poverty, invasions, pandemics, we realize quite evidently just how true those words are. Your education is in your hands now. And the race is a mere 20 seconds away from starting. But if I ask anything of you before I go today, I ask that you do your utmost not to forget to live in the present every single day. We can get so caught up in contemplating the exams of last week or the assignments of next week, but that we forget at the end of the day to cherish every day as it comes. You may all think that you have a century of university life ahead of you, but then you'll blink and it'll already be over. So brace yourselves. There are plenty of books to be read, plenty of challenges to be conquered, plenty of MCQs to be passed, plenty of friends to be made, and plenty upon plenty of experiences to be lived. You've all got a race laid out in front of you right now, and the starting whistle is only three seconds away. So on your mark, get set, and go. Thank you. Thank you, Jyoti, and thank you, Emmanuel, for speaking here today in ways that the faculty really couldn't um, speak so eloquently to you who are starting your uh, educational journey with RCSI and to hear their reflections on how they started just a few years ago, a few years ahead of you. And I think just, just before we started the ceremony here, both Jyoti and Emmanuel said that they, when they started like you here this year, it felt like they would never be ready. And yet they're, they're facing their final exams and they feel, yes, they're ready. They're ready to graduate and to move on to the next steps in their career. That really is what your education journey is about. And I have to say, Jyoti, uh, that when you know, you know, that sounds like the, 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 the title of a great hit song uh, that you should really focus on writing um, or maybe a short story. Uh, when you get your exams out of the way. But thank you so much. It takes a lot to craft those really good speeches uh, and we really appreciate them taking time out of their final year studies and exams in order to speak to you today. So now I ask you to stand and to put on your white coats.
Okay. There are the, the fast dressers and the slow dressers. Okay, I think we're ready now. Okay. If I could, if I could ask for um, some quiet. Thank you. Uh, some quiet as you as you make a solemn pledge. Um, in in there are many cultures and countries represented in this room, and as we travel around our campuses in other countries, we realise people take pledges in different ways. Some people from school time put, hold their hand up like this when they take a pledge. Some people put their hand on their heart. Um, uh, some people just have their hands by their side. Whatever it is that you're most comfortable with, please feel welcome to do this as you make this solemn pledge. And so now it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our president, Professor Ronan O'Connell. Good afternoon. What a transformation in 10 seconds. I hope these wonderfully white coats remain pristine for the rest of your careers and that you remain spotless as they are today. Can I also reflect on Jyoti and Emmanuel's comments? Reflections from Einstein to Eminem, but also the message Carpe Diem. Remember today, today is very special. You will do the declaration, which we'll go through in a minute, but it's a very special day. It marks the transition from being, I suppose, um, a school student, a first year university student, a graduate entry student into a healthcare professional. And so it's a very important day. And look around the friends that you have now, the close friends that you have now will be your friends 40 years from now. The friends I had in anatomy over 40 years ago are still my closest friends. So it's a great honor for all of us to lead you in the white coat ceremony today and to celebrate this special occasion as you begin your healthcare career. And we ask you to think about how you will learn the principles of professionalism and reflect on and master the challenges of being a professional. And we require you to commit to act from now on in a professional manner and to begin to live up to the ideals that you will practice from now on as healthcare professionals. The declaration is based on the graduate declaration and it is a powerful commitment to the highest standards of professionalism and ethical practice as you begin your clinical studies in RCSI. I encourage you to recite this declaration with pride. Listen to and reflect on each word. And bear in mind that the next time you will say these words will be at your graduation ceremony. So I invite you now to recite together with me the following declaration. Today I will begin my practice, my profession with conscience and dignity. As I learn, the health of the patient will be my first concern. I will maintain the most, most respect for human life. I will remember that there is art to my profession as well as science and warmth, empathy and understanding skills I will strive to develop may outweigh treatment alone. I will respect the confidential information that is entrusted to me even after a patient has died. I will not permit considerations of age, disease, disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient, nor to influence the appropriate completion of my duties as a healthcare professional student. 
I will not use my professional knowledge to violate human rights, civil liberties, even under threat. I will study and respect the hard-won gains of those whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge with those that follow when and where I am appropriately qualified to do so. I will abide by the code of conduct of my profession and during my studies in RCSI, I will strive to develop high standards of practice, lifelong education and research in the interest of human health. I make these promises solemnly, freely and upon my honour. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Professor Connell, and thank you to all of you. It's a great source of pride for our faculty to see you here this evening and to be able to be with you in person uh, this year again. This is a proud moment for us, and I hope it's a proud moment for you and for your family who are watching this live stream. And that now concludes our ceremony, and I was going to ask you to give yourselves a round of applause, but why not give yourselves another round of applause? <laughs> Please ask you that you're up, uh, that you uh, are upstanding for the exit of the platform party. Thank you very much. You can now exit the auditorium with the different exits. Thank you.